Hey y'all, Walter back. Today's a real quick one. I'm going to amp it up here and talk today quickly about how the wood plane, whether it's a wooden body plane like that, or a vintage Stanley, or a modern day monster like this, they are the perfect, imperfect tool. They should not work. They should not allow you, from a geometric standpoint, they should not allow you to take a straight cut. They should not allow you to make a level surface. They should not do what they do. But why do they do it? It's not the tool. It's the user. I think this is possibly one of the places where newcomers to hand planing or even old timers who get frustrated with their planes because they're not doing what they want them to do, it's, a, it's geometry. This is my straight edge, okay? I keep a couple of these that I hand tune to each other from time to time. If you look at a hand plane, you're working with a flat surface, which is the plane, the sole of the plane, but it is one plane. Geometrically, if you were to zero out on each of the four corners, that's one plane. You're slicing through a space, a place in space, okay? But your blade sticks out. Well, the, the sole is flat, okay? The sole itself is flat. The minute your blade sticks out, I'm going to exaggerate this because I'm set at like a thousandth of an inch here. But basically, if you put it on the heel, you're going to have a, a, an airspace in the front. If you put it on the toe, you're going to have an airspace in the back. It's rocking on that blade. That's why when you lay your play down on a bench, people scream and the blade police come after me and say, you should never put your plane flat down on your workbench. Well, you know what? It's your plane, it's your bench, your workshop. It doesn't matter, okay? Your clean wood surface here, clean wood surface here, same difference. But if you put your plane down on a bench and you, you, you teeter it, you notice it's teetering on the blade it is actually resting on the blade. So how come it is that we get a straight cut? As opposed to a power planer, jointer, that has a split right here by the cutter and your front table moves up and down and your rear table moves up and down and you adjust them just, just perfectly to where you're taking your shaving off the front and it's riding on the back. It's feeling. You have to have pressure on the toe. Get the cut engaged. Bring it forward through the cut. Start to let go on the pressure here. You can keep some pressure, but you start to let go on the pressure here until as you're exiting the cut, you're almost off. Now, I put my straight edge on there. And you see I'm high in the middle. Okay, that's because I cut more in the beginning and more in the end. So how do I fix that? I come to the middle, I take a shallow cut, I come back a little bit, take another shallow cut, and now it's, now it's resting all the way across. It's kind of trying to teeter a little bit there. One more pass. And some people call that a sprung joint, okay? But that's how you do it. And I believe, I read somewhere, that the Japanese, even in their actual construction of cabinetry and architecture, they will plane a hollow in their tops so that Visually, I mean, you can almost not measure, but visually, it's, 
It rises up this way, but it looks, looks straight. So that's about it for today. Basically, I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about how the plane is the perfect, imperfect tool. Ponder that a little bit. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. We're going to keep doing these as long as I can and uh, come up with some new ideas, new topics. If anybody has any plain questions, leave them in the comments. And uh, if you like it, give it a thumbs up. And naturally, share the video and go make some shavings. Walter out.